welcome to Victorian Shivers. As you've probably gathered from my previous posts, there was a whole lot of creepy about the Victorian era and an obsession with the new art of photography and photographic manipulation meant that the Victorians could find new ways of amusing and immortalizing themselves, and some of them were pretty morbid. One of the biggest fads in Victorian times was headless photography. In this less than charming pastime, the heads were removed from the body and appeared elsewhere in the photograph. The phenomenon was developed by Oscar Reglander, who took multiple images, then cut off part of them, repositioned them, and took another image of the doctor photo. Sort of like cut and paste. Nothing more adorable than your baby holding its own head. These were weird times. Imagine going into a studio and asking the photographer to make you look like you were holding your mother's head. Take a look at a couple of these edits, but try not to laugh your head off. Do you suppose this fellow feared he'd lose his head even before the duel? Do you think her husband thought she talked too much? Now this is just wrong. Photos of loved ones taken after they died might seem morbid and unseemly to our modern sensibilities, but the Victorians thought they were a way of commemorating their dearly departed and blunting the sharpness of their grief. In Victorian times, it was common for families to have many children, and with the high rate of infant mortality, many children died before the age of five. It was also common to have both the living children and the dead in the same photo. In fact, mother and father too, a true family portrait. The dead child, if of walking age, was propped up using a stand and often the shut eyes were painted to look as if they were open. This also solved the problem of getting all the family together and cut the cost down as one didn't need to have multiple photos taken. Imagine stopping at the photographers with your dead child on your way to their funeral. Ugh. More affluent Victorians could have the photographer come to the home of the deceased for a more natural setting. Too bad they didn't prop her head up. The deceased sister in this photo is the one standing. The posing stand is supporting her neck, arms, and back. A dead giveaway, though, are her discolored hands. Did I just say that? This poor little boy is probably wondering if he will be next since he's closest to the deceased baby. Although this is intriguing, I would caution you against trying to take a headless selfie. After all, we wouldn't want it to turn out to be a post-mortem photo. Join me next week and we'll see how the Victorians amused themselves with the dead. See you then.